Okay. Hi everyone. So today is going to be uh, the last topic of chapter four, and this will uh, finish us up for this half of the semester. Um, so as I said yesterday, we're kind of looking at some functions that we can put in our toolbox to model certain situations. So we have, we know we have linear functions, we have exponential, we have a periodic functions like sine and cosine, which are all we're all ready to use. Um, but if you kind of think about it, linear, exponential, periodic, sort of just one thing is happening. So, you know, you, you throw something and it goes, shoots off linearly. Um, so what we introduced yesterday was the logistic. And that kind of had two phases, right? So first we had exponential growth, and then we sort of had decay to a, a horizontal asymptote to some carrying capacity. Um, so what we're going to uh, look at today is known as a surge function. And this is a situation where, again, we have kind of two things. So we have some sort of inrush of something that comes in and grows, and then it sort of decays away. Okay. And so this gives us, instead of the S shape of logistic, it gives more of a kind of a hill shape. So it goes up to a maximum, goes quickly up to a maximum, and then decays away. And uh, the classic example uh, that this is used in is uh, you're given some drug, right? So you get that initial, you might get an injection, whatever, somehow. So you get a, a rush of a drug, it's in your body, and then your body clears it away, you know, your liver and your kidneys will start um, clearing it away. And so it'll decay away. And so here's an example of a situation. Um, so here is uh, what happens when someone smokes a cigarette. Uh, of course, the addictive thing about cigarettes is nicotine. Uh, so what happens is, you know, they start, uh, you know, they smoke a cigarette their blood nicotine sort of shoots up very quickly in, like this. And then after they've finished the cigarette, the nicotine's still in the blood and it sort of like decays away. Okay. And, and so this is what we'll get for any time, like you inject a drug, like someone in the, in, in the hospital, you get a drug injected. If they look at the concentration of the blood, of the drug in the blood, it'll follow something like this. And so if you think about it, there, there are situations where you're going to expect kind of like a surge where something comes in quickly and then decays away slowly. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a, a function that, that acts like that. Okay, and so we want exponential decay. So maybe we want that involved in it. But we know that if that, that's just the case, then we just get decay all the time. So we want, what we want is something that comes up at the beginning. And so the thing to do if we multiply that by x, right, then when x is, x is small, then this kind of like dominates. And we get kind of like this linear uptake like that. And then as x gets bigger and bigger, or t if it's time, this part will dominate and we'll get the exponential decay. And then just to add in another parameter, let's put in a constant a here. Okay, so this is a two parameter model. And this is uh, what's gonna be, uh, the surge function. And so a surge function, when we look at it, it has this kind of shape here. And this is the kind of shape we were looking for. Again, we see this rapid uptake, reaches some maximum, and then it decays away uh, 
exponentially. Okay, so um, let's have a look. So what, what can we do with which, which is calculated, calculus based? Well, we can figure out where the maximum is. And we know how to do that. We just take the derivative, right? So this, if this is our f of x and the derivative, we just use the product rule, right? It's equal to a times e to the minus bx. If we differentiate the x, minus a b x e to the minus b x if we differentiate the exponential bit. Uh, we know what to do next. We just um, factor, right? So we can take out an a as a factor. We can take out an e to the minus b x as a factor. We get one minus b x. This isn't zero, this is at zero. This is zero when one minus bx equals zero, and that happens when x equals one on b. Okay, so that gives us an, a nice feeling for what b does, right? So um, the bigger that b is, the quicker it reaches that height, right? Because if, if B is a big number, then this moves more and more towards here. So this, this, this kind of moves the mountain more towards when you take the drug. What's the effect of A on this? So if I reply, what's the difference between x e to the minus x and 2x e to the minus x? It's just twice as big. And so what's that got to do with the drug? Yeah, so here, if we have a dose here of say five milligrams, whatever, this is what happens when we put in 10 milligrams, for example. So so this, so the A tells you how big a dose you, you give, and the B tells you how quickly you reach that maximum. So the parameters have got really nice, um, really nice speed. So let's do, um, Uh, let me do an Excel file. I like Excel files. Here we go. And so let's just play with it a little bit. So all I did was uh, I've got a grid. Here's the time. Here's the search function. If you click on it, you see uh, if it'll respond to me. Why is it not reacting to me? Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Is there any reason why it's not responding to me? Um, Okay, well, hmm. Okay, that's curious. Oh, okay, uh, I'm not sharing it, I think. <sighs> Okay, I'm doing some screwing up here, sorry. Let's try. 
try sharing it again. Oh, okay, now it wants to work. Okay, so uh, he, here's just an Excel file and let's just sort of like play with it. So when we click on it, we see that I put in the formula that we've got in here. And so if I change A, if I replace one by two, we predict it just to be twice as big. And it is, <laughs> but you didn't, you had, to, you had to look at the axis here. So it's exactly the same shape. It's just twice, twice as big. And so if you, uh, this is on Blackboard, so you can play with it if you want. Uh, what happens when we change B? So if we went make B two, oh, that's three, sorry. I haven't got my glasses on. Yes, that's three. So uh, before the maximum turned out at one, so now I predict that the maximum is going to occur at one third. Let's see if that happens. Yep. So we see the thing just drag the peak over there. So things happen three times quickly if we do that. Excellent. Okay, so now we've got a, a good, a good uh, model that can predict those kind of hill situations. So we've got something that we can play with the A's and B's. We can make the mountain bigger or smaller, depending upon that's going to uh, model how much drug we give. And then we can make the peak uh, closer towards the injection time or further away, depending upon um, how quickly uh, the, the, the stuff gets into the system. Okay. Okay, so here, here's an example of this. And you see it's not perfect, not a perfect fit, but it, it, it does good for kind of modeling situations so we're, where we can think about these things. So here is the, 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 the functions we're gonna deal with. It's a two parameter family, the A and the B. Okay, so, so we can, once we have these formulas, we can, uh, we can answer questions like, so these are the types of questions I'm going to be asking. So for example, we have a drug, the drug concentration curve is modeled by this, right? So in this situation, A is 17.2 and B is minus 0.4 uh, nanograms per milliliter. And uh, for the drug to work, it's got to be reach this level in the body, okay? So a lot of what we questions that I'll ask in this uh, for this section will be graphical kind of questions. And so here we see we have 10. That's the level at which the drug works. Okay. So the question is, when should we give the second dose? So we give someone the drug, right? So this is in hours, right? So, uh, we know that the peak of the drug occurs after two and a half hours, right? That's the reciprocal of 0.4. So this is two and a half hours here. So we want it to be above 10. So we can go ahead and we can just by some graphical thing, just by putting a line here, you see the intercept. So when we want to put the second drug, it's going to be around this time, right? And then we sort of go down here and we see that that's around, oh, looks around like seven hours, say. And so we will give the, the second dose around seven hours. So this is what we use this model for. Um, and then you've got to worry about, well, when you give the second dose, that's going to be like adding a second thing here. Um, yeah. So that's one way thing to do it. 
Um, here's another sort of graphical question. So here we're talking about a, a drug anhydrous ampicillin, whatever that is. Uh, is anyone going to be doing pharmacy? I had, I've had had students who've gone into pharmacy school afterwards. Right. It is? Yeah, that's the psyllin kind of thing sort of gets that. Okay. Um, so uh, an interesting thing about drugs is that, um, so one important thing you've got to worry about is the, the weight of the patient, right? Because in a small patient, a drug is going to be, there's less of the patient, so the drug will be more concentrated, right? So for a small patient, you'll give a smaller dose. So you, you might have seen, you know, like kids at acetophen or whatever, like when you, 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 you give that, right? Um, but it actually a different thing that occurs is that a newborn is new, right? And so their kidneys and liver aren't working as good as, as someone more, more mature, right? It takes, usually takes a, you know, a year or two for, for everything to kick in properly. And so this thing here illustrates this thing here. Here we have a concentration curve for adults and a concentration curve for newborns, okay? And so, you know, this is adjusted for the fact that newborns are smaller than adults, so they're getting a smaller dose anyway. So this is so that they get the same concentration of, of drug in their system. But what's happening here? What are you, what are you seeing? It's, we're seeing that the drug is coming in and it's not going out. Right, because we know we know from math, right? How much do you have of something? Well, it depends how much is going in and how much is going out. So if the same amount is coming in and you've got more of it, what does that mean? Less is going out, right? And so, uh, so what's so if I question here, like discuss the differences between newborns and adults in the absorption of this drug. We see straight away it's because newborns are less efficient at clearing the drug. And so that means it builds up to a higher concentration. And it also takes longer to clear from the body. So the, the, the Here's another question, similar kind of thing. So here, here we definitely see a surge curve. So I could ask, what is the value for B for this? Well, we'd go ahead and we'd find where the maximum is and we drop it down here. So this is gonna be one on B here. So if one on B is 30, B is one thirtieth. Uh, this is in minutes, right? So, so again, as, as always, you've got to be careful with units. Sometimes things are in minutes, sometimes things in, in hour. That's going to affect B, right? Because it's B times T. So B is going to be something per minute kind of thing, right? So if B is in terms of minutes, B is going to be around 1 30th. If it's in terms of hours, it's going to be uh, what, two, right? Because it's going to be half an hour. Again, I have this, this question about when should we give the second dose? Okay. Should we give it at dose 10? No, right? Because that's when the first dose is becoming effective. So if we gave it, gave the drug again, it will just kind of build up higher. So when are we going to give the second dose? Yep. 
Uh, so, sorry, who, who, someone said D? Yeah, it would be D where it intersects. Yeah, so here we're at 70. Um, the only question is, should it be 70 or should it be 60? Because at 70, you're starting to clear the drug. And so you might be worried that at 70, when you do the second dose, it might drop below the line. So you don't want it ever to drop below the line. But if we look at it, how is it decaying, comparing about how it comes in? So when, when, we, when we put it in, right, it comes in really quickly. So it comes in quicker than it goes out. So I think if you gave the dose at 70, the speed at which it comes in will overpower the rate at which the new drug comes in will be greater than the, what the old drug goes out. So I would say 70 looks pretty good. Okay, so, So, uh, so another thing we could do is we can compare two curves. Uh, so we've got two products, A and B, which contain the strong, uh, same drug. And we've got here the minimum effectiveness. Okay. Um, the only thing, way we could make this more complicated would be if we put in another line that like a danger line. So that could be some way that the question can be uh, made a little, little harder. Uh, so what do you think is true about those two different products? And remember, more than one thing can be correct. What do we think about A, true or false? True. A has a higher peak concentration than B. Product A is absorbed faster than product B. True. That's right. true. Yep, because we can see a really sharp decay thing. Product A is effective for a longer period of time than B. False. Because we can see A's period of effectiveness is here, B's period of effectiveness is a much longer period. Okay. So as I said, most of these questions are kind of graphical kind of questions where you just like, um, you have to interpret the graph. And so you might say, well, when would you use product A and when would you use product B? I guess product B is probably what you would use at home. You know, if it's like a pill that you're taking, product A might be what you'd use in the hospital when you know, you've got to do something really quickly. You might do it, do it there. Okay. Um, so that's all I had for today. So we just a few short things to finish up. Um, so uh, we won't meet tomorrow. Have a nice break. Have a good time. Be safe. Uh, I'm hoping to get vaccinated soon. <laughs> that's my big, that's my holiday wish. Uh, we'll come back Monday afterwards. We'll have the exam on Thursday and we'll start entirely new um, section. We'll start talking about integration. So when we meet on Monday, we'll meet in a lab and I'll give like an introductory lab just to introduce you to the idea of integration. Any questions at all anyone has? Okay, cool. And remember to, uh, those who haven't given the last homework in yet, give the homework in. Okay, see you guys.